deleveragings have happened throughout history. You can go back thousands of years, hundreds of years. They always have happened because there's a certain nature to um, a debt cycle and how that works. When, when debt rises faster than income, uh, you get to spend more. So l l I'll explain it in, in, in brief. Let's, let's imagine you're earning $100,000 a year and you have no debt. Then I can go out and borrow because I have no debt. I can go to the bank and I can borrow. And let's say they lend me $10,000 a year. So now I have $110,000 a year that, that I could spend. When I spend that $110,000, somebody else earns $110,000. So that causes their earnings to go up. As their earnings go up, they also can go to the bank. And so you build a cycle in which debt rises faster than income. Most importantly, that debt rises faster than the ability to service income. So that is a self-reinforcing upward cycle. It causes asset prices to rise because if incomes are rising, companies are doing better, so their earnings do better. And so people um, w with debt can buy goods, services, or financial assets, and those things cause them to go up. So there's a debt expansion, but obviously debt can't rise faster than income forever. Usually when we had um, a downturn, you'd lower interest rates because lowering interest rates would have stimulative effects on the economy. First, when you lower interest rates, it has the effect of uh, making it easier to service your debt. Lower interest rates make it easier to service the debt. Also, it makes items that are bought on credit cheaper. Your monthly payments go down. If you buy a car or a house, your monthly payments go down if interest rates are lower, so it makes it cheaper, meaning you could afford more. So it stimulates the economy. And it also has the effect of raising assets prices because assets, um, if you have an income stream, it could be renting a property, you're comparing it with the going interest rate. And if the interest rate goes down, the value of the asset goes up. So it has a wealth effect. So as the economy works, when there were lower interest rates, it would have the effect of stimulating an economy. And that stimulated economy really stimulated debt growth and therefore purchasing on debt, and it raises. So the economy always has gone through these cycles in which uh, interest rates go up when they're trying to slow the economy, interest rates go down when they're um, trying to stimulate the economy. Um, however, when interest rates get close to zero, it doesn't work. So you have a lot of debt. Debt is rising faster than income, can't go on forever can't lower interest rates, they hit zero, and the world changes. So that's the basic cause-effect dynamic. So in 2007, 2006, 2007, it was very clear we were in a bubble. But like all of these uh, situations, people at the time very much get carried away with what's happening at the time, like 2000. Five, six, everybody says the stock market goes up. It's a great investment uh, because it went up. They don't realize it's more expensive. <laughs> Going up may make it more expensive. But no, they look back and they say it's a great investment or houses or I can go borrow money and, and, and buy houses and do this. But they don't think about the paying back and how that works. This is human nature. This has happened through hundreds and thousands of years. And so... They get to the point where interest rates can't go down, there's not a rectifying of the problem, and you begin a deleveraging. And then the process begins to work in reverse. A deleveraging means no longer can you raise income faster, excuse me, no longer can you raise your debt faster than your income. So if you can't, you have to slow your debt, you have to slow your spending. So as you slow your spending, you're slowing somebody else's income. And, and when I say you're, you're, it's the purchase of goods, services, and financial assets, and as you slow the purchases of goods, services, and financial assets, the economy goes down and the assets go down. And as the assets go down and the incomes go down, there's more of a need to cut your spending. And so it begins to build... Um, 
a self-reinforcing negative cycle. There's not enough money in the system. There's not enough money in the system because, uh, again, um, just just think of it. There's spending, and spending could be paid for either by money or credit. So if you go into a store and you're buying something, let's say I'm buying a suit, I can pay for it either by credit or I can pay by money. If I pay by credit, it's a promise to deliver money. If I pay by money, that transaction's complete. But since I can pay by credit, I can stimulate the demand, I can have a strong economy, but I owe money. And so the owing of the money means that uh, when, when I can no longer produce credit and I have to go get money, I need more money in the system. And when you have a zero interest rate, then the central bank is stuck because this deleveraging will continue to feed on itself. It will continue, um, I don't spend, you don't earn, it goes down. Can't service my debts because I don't have enough money to service my debts. Banks get in trouble because the person who they lent them the money to doesn't pay back. What is a bank? A bank is a very simple thing. People gather, they put money in a bank. That person goes and lends it, to, that bank goes and lends it to some other people, and they then hope to get paid back at a higher interest rate. That's what it is. And so when those people can't pay back because they don't have, because that credit cycle starts to work in reverse and they can't pay back, then the banks get in trouble. They lose money. And when they lose money, then they're bad banks. And the whole system works so you see that um, at the same time as there's a contraction in credit, there is a stock market falling because you need to sell assets. And because of the contraction in credit and people are spending less, earnings of companies go down, so the companies are worth less. And because of then the, the debt problems, the banks don't do well, so we have a banking crisis. So you see that that deleveraging happens and in, in the ways that we're used to happening, uh, the debt, private sector debt doesn't increase, uh, spending is less, uh, banks get in trouble, markets go down, and so on, and it's not enough money. The central bank lowers interest rates, interest rates hit zero, they're stuck. So that's a deleveraging, and that's a, dep that's a depression part of a deleveraging.